According to a North Dakota Highway Patrol, a Valley City woman was airlifted to Fargo after sustaining injuries in a car accident Wednesday night. 22-year-old Heather Wilson was driving eastbound to Fargo on I-94. The vehicle rolled into the median and Wilson was ejected. She was not wearing a seatbelt and was cited for a DUI. Police officials in Fargo say they are focusing on preventing future crimes after a string of four armed robberies. Police Chief Keith Turns says they are investigating the crimes and are working with businesses to improve security systems along with other preventative measures. Police have two suspects in custody in connection with the robberies. North Dakota Governor Jack Dalrymple is seeking applications for groups interested in being the official state band or orchestra and the official state chorus. Deadline for the groups to apply is November 14th. The governor and his wife will select the official groups based on talent, achievement, and community service. The Occupy movement has made its way to North Dakota. About 50 people gathered at a busy Grand Forks intersection Wednesday, holding signs calling for economic and social reforms. Some UND students didn't agree with the demonstration because they didn't think it made sense in North Dakota, because North Dakota has the nation's lowest unemployment rate. Two House Democrats are urging Major League Baseball and the Players Union to implement testing for human growth hormone and ban chewing tobacco by players in uniform and in public view. They're making a push on tobacco and HGH as MLB and the union negotiate a new collective bargaining agreement with the current one set to expire next month. Some baseball players interviewed by the Associated Press at the end of the season were receptive to a ban, but others viewed it as an infringement on their freedom. During an initial meeting with the President of France, President Obama said the resolution of the European financial crisis is the most important task facing the world leaders gathered at the Group of 20 summit. The Greek government threw the entire economic plan and the meeting into chaos due to their belief that the United States is just a spectator. American officials have been exhorting their European counterparts to use Europe's own resources to try to solve the crisis. The Prime Minister of Greece, George Papadro, called off his plan to hold a referendum on Greece's new loan deal with the European Union. He said there was no need for a referendum now that the opposition New Democracy Party has said it would back the debt deal. The developments re-established a tentative stability in Greece. The decision to drop the referendum came after Greece's finance minister switched course and decided to back the loan deal, which would involve a 50% write-down of Greece's debt. Turning to weather, Jessica Gulseth has the forecast for this first weekend in November. Jessica? Thanks, Courtney. Today was warmer than yesterday. We saw a high near 52 degrees with a slight breeze. Tonight looks fairly nice as well. It's going to cool down, but only to about 33 degrees, which is just shy of freezing, but it beats the 23 degrees we've been having the last few nights. Tomorrow, which is Friday, looks just as nice as today. A few clouds and a high of 52 degrees, and then clearing up and cooling down to 36 degrees once night falls. As the weekend hits, there is a possibility of snow here in Jamestown. Saturday, there is about a 20% chance of rain after 1 p.m. with a high in the 50s. Then the rain turns to sleet and our chances increase to 60% as the day turns to night. Sunday, temperatures in the 40s with a 40% chance of snow and sleet for most of the day. Looking, uh, looking at next week, Monday and Tuesday will start us off with temperatures in the mid and upper 40s. Well, a little disappointment if you don't want snow, and a little excitement if you do. Either way, that's the weather for you today, Jamestown. Now back to you. Thank you, Jessica. Titanic the Musical debuted tonight at Jamestown College. The show was held in the Ryland Auditorium and was put on by the Jamestown College Theater Department. JCTV News Correspondent J.T. Petch talked to the show's director, Michael McIntyre, and the show's musical director, Dr. Richard Wallentine. I'm J.T. Petch, here with Mike McIntyre, the head of the Jamestown College Theater Department and the director for the Titanic. Uh, Mr. McIntyre, uh, gotta ask, is this anything like the movie? Well, both the movie and the play do feature an awful lot of truth, awful lot of the actual characters. You're familiar with the movie, it centers around two characters that are pure fiction. And what we have in our play are all characters based on fact. What made you choose this production? Well, I try to always keep abreast of new shows as they come out, and this one came out in 1997. Immediately when I heard uh, the score to it, when I first got the recording of it and listened to it, I thought, this is a magnificent show, and I need to be doing this someday. How would you describe the music in Titanic? 
The music in Titanic is uh, actually Titanic. Uh, it's a fairly large orchestra accompanying the show. We have a, a group of musicians, about 26 strong, ranging from a full string section to full percussion. So it is big music. Um, what do you like best about the music in this show? Probably the variety of musical styles uh, in Titanic. The composer uh, has given us numbers of different kinds of songs, everything from ragtime to uh, uh, scenes that really come across as operatic, uh, to uh, Gilbert and Sullivan, uh, uh, famous uh, operatic composers in the 19th century. Um, to Celtic music, it's just a wide variety of styles. If you were unable to watch tonight's performance, don't worry. The show runs both tomorrow and Saturday evenings. Tickets are $10 and can be purchased at the Jamestown College box office by calling 701-252-3467, extension 2435, or online at tickets at jc.edu. In sports, the Jimmy men's basketball team is off to a good start with their first win coming last weekend. They hope to continue with another win against Stork College tomorrow night in Jamestown at 7.30. The women's basketball team is also off to a good start with a record of four wins and no losses. They take on Dork College tomorrow night also in Jamestown at 5.30. The men's and women's cross country teams are en route to California for the NAIA conference qualifying meet. The race starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. That's it for the news tonight on this third day of November. Please join us again tomorrow night as we continue to connect the campus with the community. I'm Courtney Oliver. Good night, Jamestown.